Hi, I'm Phil Webb, Principal Consultant with Select Business Solutions. IT development is holding back many organisations. It takes too long for software developers to build the systems to support businesses. More processing power makes little impact. Extra staff significantly increases costs. Lost earnings through late delivery of products dramatically affect the bottom line. IT development must not be allowed to remain on this critical path. Successful organisations have rediscovered some old principles and in conjunction with modern software techniques have overcome this crisis in IT development. How? By greatly increasing the productivity of their software developers through the reuse of components. Reusable components as a concept has been discussed since the early days of computers. There have been few commercially successful libraries of software components and many organisations have attempted to develop their own specific set of useful artefacts. Yet these have never fully given the benefits of shorter time to market, flexibility of construction and faster response to changes in business operations. Barriers within the IT development groups and the software construction business in general are significant, but they can be overcome. New software development approaches, such as component-based development, mean that component construction and reuse is back on the agenda. But IT management need to grasp the initiative. In this module, we'll look at the software development environment from a wider perspective. Much of this video-based course is about the technology and development techniques. But all this work does not happen in a vacuum. Your daily work is managed as part of a project, which itself is part of larger development activities overseen by IT managers who are responding as best they can to the demands of the business. Sometimes these managers are successful, but often IT development comes in for criticism for late deliveries, poor quality and missing features. Top business managers usually consider that software development is out of control. This module details a successful initiative for IT managers and developers to regain control over the development process and to greatly increase the productivity of development groups. You'll benefit from hearing topics such as how high levels of productivity can be achieved through reuse, why reuse is neither automatic nor free, the new skills, structures and development processes necessary, tools, methods and techniques essential to success, and how to avoid dangerous pitfalls and roadblocks. This session examines the driving forces, both in business and technology, that are deepening the software crisis. Past attempts at reuse are considered, and the new approaches to constructing systems show the value of reuse in modern software development. This sets the scene. Business need versus development performance, the drivers of the software crisis. Chasing the silver bullet. Reuse, the only valid option. Logic, fear and greed, building a business case. It seems unfashionable to still talk of the software crisis when there appears so much effort and money being spent on software development. Yet the evidence is all around us if we take the time to look. One of the most common symptoms of the software crisis is the runaway. Surveys indicate that 62% of all companies have experienced projects with severe cost overruns in the last five years. That cost overruns in the range of 100% to 200% are common to every company. That 15% of all software developments for production use, that is, excluding research and development, are never delivered and that 25% of large projects, those with more than 25 staff years effort, are never completed. 
Runaways can happen to any project, whether large or small. A 10-day overrun may seem trivial, but when the original estimate was for five days effort, then the overrun is significant. Significant overruns occur when we underestimate the complexity of what we're attempting to build. This increasing level of complexity is evident in what have become known as monster projects. Example of these monster projects include financial settlement systems, telecoms and GSM networking, the London Heathrow Terminal 5 baggage handling, and space missions. All of these projects break the limits of conventional software production techniques. For example, the figures for the GSM digital cellular network exceed the bounds of 1 million lines of code, 1,000 major components, a maximum of 15,000 lines per component, a 10-year design life, a team size of 125 staff, a defect rate of less than one error per 1,000 lines, and productivity of 50 lines per day. Some of these systems are critical to the success of the organisation. It may seem less important to ensure the monthly sales projection figures are accurate and valid than that of the navigation system on the space shuttle. But the result of an error is no less catastrophic. Safety is a term equally, equally applicable to business systems as to those we generally consider safety critical systems. True safety critical systems such as fly-by-wire aircraft control, ra railway signal monitoring, process plant control and oil platform monitoring have now become commonplace. Fortunately, there are only infrequent failures of such types of systems. But those failures that do occur have catastrophic results. The near meltdown in 1979 of the Three Mile Island nuclear plant caused by the display of an incorrect valve status is well known. So is the crash at the Paris Air Show in 1973 of the, the, the then new European Airbus aircraft when the pilot's commands for a steep climb were ignored by the onboard computer as being out of normal flight profiles the gentler climb angle, angle did not miss the trees. Subsequent investigations cleared the Airbus computer systems, but whenever there is another crash, it always reopens the fly-by-wire debate. Other critical systems include modern medical instruments, such as blood analyzers and MRA scanners, and require the same level of discipline. Making an error on a blood culture or over-radiating a patient will have serious effects on the individuals involved. Such critical systems require a high level of discipline and well-defined software engineering methods. Good software development practices are rare. Poor development approaches are commonplace. In the UK, the National Computing Centre, or NCC, produced a survey in early 2000 for the then Department of Trade and Industry, estimating that more than one million UK pounds, or about $1.6 million per hour, is lost by the UK software industry through poor software development methods. Goodness knows how much is lost worldwide. Perhaps we don't want to find out. <laughs>